So welcome. Today we are going to have a look at the selection menu. It's a thing a lot of people are using and we are going to talk about how to implement it and all the different features and buttons you can create and assign with it. So let's get started. Here are some simple examples of the selection menu. If you select the door here, you can see that a window appears and it has a little door symbol. If I press on it, the door opens up. If I press again, it closes and you can see that it's even animated. And another thing you can see, it, it always appears where you press on the mesh. So if I close this, I press here, it appears here and it also follows the player. So it always tries to stay between the player and the object, even if there's something in between. So this is a, a really nice feature. And for this, it's the same, you get a play button. So you can see for a door, I have an open close here. I have a play button where I can start the rotation, stop it again. And for the light, we have some more options here. If I press here, you can see there are a lot of options. For example, I can change the color of the mesh or I can toggle the light on and off, even change the color of the light and close this down, close this down. And all these windows here are context sensitive and modular. So you can define what should be in there and what options uh, should be available to the user. So let's have a look of how to do that. The most important thing you would need here is the component select. Here you can define if the object is selectable or not. So if I turn this off and I play, you can see I can click, but nothing happens here. So this is a very simple way to define if it's selectable or not. There is a more complex way with interfaces and I'm going to show that later on. But for now, let's keep it on. And on the type, the thing you just saw is the selection menu. This is the most common one and most people want to use this here. You can change it to none, then actually nothing will happen. To custom, that's the one with the interfaces I'm going to show you later. Or you can change it to window and then a window will appear that I'm going to show here with the cubes. So let's keep it here. And the next thing you would need is a component selection menu. Here you can define what kind of things you want to show there. And if we reset it to the default, you can see that it's just open and close. That was the open and close symbol. And we can change it to all of these here. These are presets we already created for you guys here. And you can use them. For example, the light uses this here. And we can see if we play it now, the open and close button disappeared and we now have a light button. The logic is not implemented in the door, so nothing will happen here. But you could totally copy this logic from the light to the door and maybe do a little light here and then toggle the light on and off. And you can even go in here. Let's select the component selection menu again. And we add, add another component to the array. So we can have the light and the open and close. And so we are able to have both functionalities here. Turn on the light, turn it off open the door up or close it again. The same is true here for the fan. It has component select with the selection menu again, and it has this component selection menu where the play and the delete is implemented. Actually, the delete works with all meshes out of the box. This is a very simple one. So we can also add it here to our door, and then we would be able to also delete the door if we want. And you can see all the menus also disappear with it. The same is true for the fan. And it just disappears. So the same is true for the fan. If I select the selection menu here, 
Oh, first let's let's check this here. So nothing special. Select is enabled, and again the type is selection menu. So we can go to our component selection menu to see what's available for us here, and we have one item. It's the play. We can also, for example, one thing that is always working here is the delete. Let's try it out because this is a base logic that is implemented everywhere. I can play, I can pause and I can delete the object and then all the widgets would also disappear. For the light, you can see there are six different symbols and if we select it, and select the component selection menu again, you can see here are all six different objects. And if we decide that we don't want to give the player the option to delete the, uh, the object, we can just delete this option and play again. And now the delete function is not available anymore. And if I hit the information button, you can see a window appears with a lot of different um, informations where you can change the tabs here. You could change the color. You can even change the object itself. So we have some vari variants in there. For example, I can change it to a ball. Let's make it bigger that you can better see it. All this information, if we see here, we have brand, uh, color, material, size, position, rotation. These are actually the, uh, this is the real position. So it's real time data. Um, the other things are just placeholders for you to modify. So we have the same option here, but here, if I select it, it immediately opens up this window. So there is no radial menu. You press and it immediately opens up this window. This could be a nice uh, option if you want to have a separate behavior. And let's have a quick look on how to set this up. So the first one, you already know all of this because in the selection, it's once again, it's enabled and it's the selection menu. And in the selection menu, we have this four different items. And here's our info item that opens up this window menu. So nothing new here. The new thing is here. If we select our component select, you can see the type is now window. And window was just this, you press it. So you press it and immediately the window appears. So in order for this to work, we add a new component. It's called a component window object. And here you can define all the different windows. So you can see the windows up there. This is our, our tabs, three of them. So we have the stats, materials and variants. Just to remember, these are here, stats, materials and variants. And we also have, if we select our component window again, the stats field, price, color, manufacturer, scale and brand. So some of the stats here, for example, the scale, you don't need any stats there because it's just the scale of the object. It gets the information of the real object. It's the same for the size bounds, the rotation or the transform, all of them here. But there are some, for example, the price where you can actually change it. So now it's uh, 1,337, let's say it's $42. And the brand name, let's change it from Unreal to Unity. <laughs> well, no, I will not do that. Let's call it Fortnite. Okay, let's save it and play again. And now if I open up the window, you can see we have our $42 and the brand name is Fortnite. Another really cool feature, if we select this here and we turn on the light, you can see actually all four lights turn on and we can also change the mesh here and change the light color. And you can see all of these variables are completely connected with each other. 
how this works is we created this little blueprint helper group and here you can see that all of them are connected and we can remove one of them let's let's remove one of them so let's see who it is so now this is not connected anymore only they work together you can see they work and this is now completely independent of the other ones and you can also define on what kind of attributes should be exchanged for example here we can see the exchange attribute if we change the mesh the light to turn it on and off the light color and the material so we could go in there and say okay we don't want to actually copy the light color to all the other objects so let let's delete it only the mesh the light and the material and now if i go in i can turn it on it turns on for all of them i can exchange the mesh and let's turn it back on but if i change the color you can see only this mesh gets the color change so this is a really cool thing to copy and mirror some attributes between groups but also you can you have the possibility to really say okay i only want to mirror the materials if you make like a big architectural visualization and you want to change the material of all objects at once you can totally do it with this helper here so i hope this examples we created here will help you to get started with the selection system and as always if you need any help it would be great if you join our discord community